Aloha, and welcome to this episode of the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. I am your host, Gwendolyn Harris. My guest today started her musical journey in Philadelphia, where she began playing piano at the age of 10 and had her first professional gig at the age of 14. Today, not only is she a musician, but she is also an educator, author, composer, and she is the first lady of smooth jazz. Her impressive resume as a recording artist and touring musician includes appearances with Norman Brown, Mindy Bear, Bobby Womack, and Ray Parker Jr., just to name a few. She has received numerous awards, and I am sure you have seen her at jazz festivals as the leader of the all-female ensemble Jazz in Pink, or her other band, Three Piece Suit. I am so happy to have her here today. Let's welcome my Philly sister, Miss Gail Johnson, to the show. Aloha, Gail. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, wonderful. I am so glad to have you here. As you know, I call you the very first time I met you years ago. I, you know, I've always called you my Philly sister. Right, right. <laughs> now, now, you started music at a young age, playing your first professional gig at the age of 14. That's amazing. What or who inspired you to play music? Well, I don't know. Um, I think uh, I think Stevie Wonder. I saw him with his Farfisa at the uh, Uptown Theater in uh, North Philly. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, I always, something always in me wanted to, you know, just do music. But when I saw him play at the Uptown Theater, I was like, oh, I was convinced that's what I wanted to do. So I called my uncle up. I was like, hey, you got to help me get, I got to get a keyboard. <laughs> so, so him and my dad got their little pennies together and um, got me a keyboard and uh, just started playing with uh, a band we called Natural Experience with my cousin. He played guitar. So. Uh -huh. Yeah, those are the days. Now Look at you. <laughs> now, where where was your first gig? Just out of curiosity, you know, it's Philly girls. Where where was your first gig? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, I know it was North Philly, and I believe it was a bar. And you know, we were too young to be in the bar, but my uncle Bill <laughs> was our chaperone, so he would uh, take us all in the van and. Uh, he would, uh, we would all set up the equipment and we'd play music. And then on our breaks, we'd sit all in the corner and they would bring us a whole tray full of coats with cherries in them. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was, I'm sure it was uh, right in North Philly somewhere, like Gordon Lehigh. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now. Our, yeah. Then we started <laughs> playing cabarets and then we did the boat rides on the Delaware River. And, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Look, look, it's been years since I've been back to Philly and you're getting, you're giving me flashbacks. Just, just all uh -huh. those things. Now, do you yeah. play any other instruments besides the keyboards and piano? Well, when I, uh, when I got to high school, they were like, we don't, we already have a piano player. We already have a harp player. So you got to pick something else. Uh, this is what we got, a flute. <laughs> so I started, <laughs> yeah, and I, I started really liking it. Uh, I didn't like it at first because I get a headache. Um, you know, my lessons were at eight o'clock in the morning and mm -hmm. every day I had a headache for about three months. <laughs> so uh, that wasn't fun, but I really started to enjoy that. And I, I played first chair, I played second chair mostly because okay. I had two girls ahead of me that was just a bomb and that was their instrument. But uh, when they weren't around, I played first chair and piccolo. So, and I mess around with guitar a little bit and. You know, I mess around on the drums and uh, just enough to teach the kids at church how to play. This is how you hold the drumsticks. <laughs> Two and four, you know, and uh, I get on the bass and I know the strings. Okay, play this note, play that note. So, you know, I don't know how to play those instruments as a uh, real musician, but as a teacher, I messed around with several. What high school did you go to, Gail? I went to Cardinal Doherty. Oh, okay. All and, right. you know, yeah. All yeah, right. we had a real apartment. Yeah, we had a really full out orchestra and we'd play behind the uh, the plays that the students would put on. In fact, I was on the art committee, so I was also behind the scenes painting the uh, the set. <laughs> oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Now, 
you are the musical director for Norman Brown. And I know that must be a lot of fun because I know when you guys were here and he was here just meeting both of you, I had met, I met you before, but the two of you together were just clowning, clowning, clowning around. Um, yeah. How is it working with him? Oh, he's been a sweetheart. He is like, a, he is just the best musician. I'm telling you, he's a, he's just a well-rounded player. He reads music well. You know, he's a good leader and, um, you know, he writes well. He's a great composer and he's fun to be around, you know, like anybody, you know, after a while, they'd be like, leave me alone, you know, for a minute because I'm thinking about something else. You know, there were a few moments in between, you know, for that kind of stuff. But otherwise, uh, he's very generous, very giving. And, um, yeah, he's a joy to play with. Yeah, he's fun on stage. He, se he seems like it. He, he's, he definitely seems mm -hmm. like it. Now. Yeah. You are known as the first lady of smooth jazz. <laughs> you, you have paved the way, you know, mm -hmm. for for yeah. some of these other, um, you know, female musicians to come on board yeah. and, and, and do what they do. Yeah. Now, yeah. you started the group Jazz and Pink. How did that how did that come about? Well, I was uh, with Norman on the smooth jazz cruise, and I believe he was hoaxing that year. And, you know, when you're on a cruise, you know, you're going from room to room and seeing band to band. And I ran into this lady that was up there playing the flute. And I mean, she was <laughs> killing it. I was like, oh, man, come to find Althea. And I had met her all prior in Detroit with a group called Straight Ahead. So, but I didn't know her. So uh, I didn't recognize her. But once, you know, we met and we started talking and I was like, girl, you know what? This don't make no sense. It's just not enough opportunities for women in jazz. We need to get together and talk about it. So my friend Pina, she was on uh, on the cruise. The next day we had lunch and we talked about it. We, we need to get together and we need to share the stage, play each other's music. And Pina uh, went to work calling her people up in uh, San Diego and got us a gig. Next thing you know, everybody came back home from the cruise and uh, people were calling, I'll play, I'll play. Because I wasn't really thinking about an all-female band. I was really thinking about the female artists. Mm -hmm. And any old band would do, you know. Mm -hmm. We can get some guys that can play, you know. <laughs> but uh, but as it turned out, when all the ladies said that they were willing to play, and then I started calling up other ladies. It was like, yeah, let's do that. And so it really was a uh, a force, you know. It's like, okay, this is this is bigger than us. This is something that we need to do. We need to make a statement. We need to, you know, put it out there. Because uh, once we got everybody together, Karen Briggs was on violin. You know, she's a virtuoso. Yes. Of course, uh, Al me and, uh, Althea Renee, she has been playing everywhere. And she is just fierce. She just means it when she gets up there. And then we, in San Diego was the first time I had met Maria Antoinette. And um, Kina had told me about her. You're like, oh, you should, you should meet my girl Maria. And I was like, oh my goodness. So she teamed up with us, and uh, you know, we ended up with a really, really cool band. Uh, Lynn Keller was on bass, and uh, Lynn Fidmont was singing lead. And, wow. Uh, yeah, uh, CC Royal was playing saxophone, and you know, it really turned out to be really a wonderful thing. Darlene uh, uh, D Love. <laughs> She played guitar, so it really turned out really nice. And we ended up playing with Cedric Anderson on drums because Cora Coleman was supposed to play with us, mm -hmm. but Prince called her. And oh said, wow! Oh, get back to Minneapolis because we got a <laughs> rehearsal we got to do it. Da da da. And we like, oh man, this is our very first gig, you know. So uh, as it turned out, Cedric just filled in, and uh, soon uh, we got um, another drummer and. Um, we got Althea's girl from down Dallas. Uh, we got Pocket, Pocket Brown. And so, yeah, then it's, the rest is history. <laughs> we just kept rolling after that. So who are your members now? Who are your current members of, of Jazz and Pink? Because I know when you guys were we, here a couple yeah. years ago, um, yes. you had different our, members. Yeah, uh, our latest members are uh, D, uh, D. Simone on drums. Uh, we have a new bassist now, Zuri Appleby. Our, okay. uh, uh, music director Robin Brown is off doing her solo career. So, ah. you know, she only had one record out, but heck, it's been five or six years. So she's like, you know what, I need to pick, put some attention to that. And so, mm -hmm. you know, 
you know, all the blessings, just go do your thing, you know. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, we don't have a guitarist right now. And so we're kind of revamping. We got a new vocalist, Josie Aiello. She's done some work in the past with Patty Austin and uh, Quincy Jones. And she is just absolutely fabulous. She tore it up at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, wow. And, yeah, we closed that with I'm Every Woman. We had the whole crowd going. <laughs> And uh, we got Yakira on percussion, and she's a, a fine vocalist as well. So, um, you know, we're kind of revamping. Everybody's been really on hiatus. We've done a few virtual gigs, but, you know, it's, it's just, just not Right. Yeah, it's very so yeah. you have, you also are in another band as well, or you are, a, you, you, you're a busy lady. You, you're you're yeah, very see, busy. So you have another yeah. band, Three Piece Suit. Right. Now, that was my original band. My original band was Three P Suit. And Jeanette Harris and her brother used to come down from Fresno and they used to come and play with me down at Lava Lee. And I couldn't afford to pay her, but I said, you can come down, jam, and sell your CDs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so she ended up being uh, on the Jazz and Pink stage as well. We've ended up with over 50 women uh, gracing the stage with Jazz and Pink. But, um, but yeah, Three Piece Suit was always my band, Three Guys and Me. And uh, so now I got some fellows from down south, down in uh, Texas, and they play with me when I go out and do Three Piece Suit. In fact, hey. I just covered one of the videos that we did at the Huntsville Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was fun, you know. Yeah, yeah, they some little young guys, you know, they I call them my little Berkeley boys. <laughs> and uh, guys, they just come out playing so hard. It's like, oh, gosh, so I'm trying to keep up with them, but... You know, they pushed me to, to just, uh, you know, do my best and be good. And they look to me for leadership and guidance and you know, career things. And, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Now, it's been hard, you know, for all of you uh, entertainers, musicians, all of you during this pandemic. It has absolutely put everything to a standstill. What yes. have you been doing to cope and, and get through this? Oh, girl, it really has been something. I uh, Well, I started writing uh, the record, and we couldn't get together. So uh, I just started writing and writing, and I finally finished the uh, new record, uh, Joy. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been painting. I'm, um, I've am i been doing uh, acry working with acrylic paints. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, I've been enjoying doing that. I'm working on a cookbook. Uh, I got wow. a new song. I said, I need to collect all these songs that I did and, and just, you know, write them down and, and put them in a book. And uh, so, you know, like everybody else, trying to find ways to monetize, you know, what I do. And so, uh, you know, practicing and a little video editing now. I've been uh, learning that. That's, whew, that's really a skill set. <laughs> <laughs> so, Can you give us a little sample of what you've been working on or just something, just a little something to give us Gail Johnson, you know? Well, you know, I've been, what I've been doing, I've been really doing a lot of straight ahead stuff. And so I discovered, I recently discovered a tune by Monk called Evidence. And uh, I've been playing that and reharmonizing giant, giant steps. But I like uh, James Williams. He's like my piano mentor. And this is one of his songs. <laughs> Thank you. 
we need you need to get back get back on stage we need to get you back on stage <laughs> so I always play that kind of stuff all day but you know i love my smooth jazz i like my beat you know but when i want to get pensive and when i want to go into my head uh-huh well, anything you play, you know, I'm going to listen to. I don't care what it is. I'm going to listen to it. <laughs> I will listen to it. Now, you released in, in I believe it was 2008, the album Pearls. Yeah. And just, just out of curiosity, because you know our vice president, our new vice president, Kamala Harris, she has bring, brought out in all the females, yeah. everyone wearing pearls. Do you yes. see another album, maybe Pearls 2 coming out or Volume oh, 2? Oh, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, because, you know, uh, everybody just loves that record. And uh, I always tease, it was a big hit here in Los Angeles, but uh, uh, I really um, have come to find out that uh, it's just been streamed all over the world. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, and so that's been... Um, that, that's been wonderful. That's, that's, I think, my best record. But now Joy is here, so I don't Joy. know. Joy. Now, I, you know, I, I love all of your music, but I really do love Joy. I play that on my radio show, and I absolutely love it. Yeah. I drive to work jamming to it. So. Yeah. I'm telling you, that was, it was a lot of fun. I didn't feel pressure. I didn't feel, you know, like I had to create this or that. You know, I just had all this time and freedom. You know, uh, okay, well, what are you going to do with your time now that Corona's here? You know, you can't right. go out. And, uh, you know, so I just started trying to get all the things done that I hadn't had time to do before. And Norman used to say that all the time, if I could just take a year off from all this ripping and running, because we were in airports every weekend, you know, every week, you know, we're uh, in a flight somewhere. And uh, so it was great to have the time off. But now it's like, you know, well, we need to get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> now, what new projects are you working on or any shows? I know it's kind of hard to tell about shows or anything, but I know a lot of shows that were canceled, they're rescheduling them. So what new projects yeah. or what shows um, should we be looking for, for you with Norman or with Jazz and Pink, if possible? Well, we don't know. My, uh, I've got my manager, Michael Smith, and I've got two agents, Barbara Collins and Kathy V, and they're all feverishly looking for performance opportunities for us. So uh, we may, uh, we're, we're on the books for something in San Antonio with Heartbeat uh, Productions. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, we've got a couple offers for some virtual things. And uh, but probably Vegas would probably be the next thing. But I mean, we would love to come to Hawaii. Oh, know. yes. The yes, blue well, here, right? we, <laughs> yes, Blue No Hawaii is here. And yes, we need to get you to Blue No. You know, yeah. you, you need to, you need to uh, come to Blue Note. Um, now, one question, uh, somebody, I, I told somebody that I was going to interview you. And one thing that they wanted to know was, you started your career very young. And um, what, uh, what is one piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? Oh, to my younger self, I would have, I would have got a manager sooner. Mm -hmm. I mean, we had our manager when uh, I was, um, you know, like I said, when we were younger, but once I went off to school, I went off to Berkeley mm -hmm. and uh, I started getting discouraged. You know, I was surrounded by everybody from my age to 50 that were well experienced and toured and were with, working with the best of everyone. And I became discouraged. I was like, there's no way I'm going to become another Herbie Hancock. So I better just go back to doing top 40, you know, I mean, so I, I just say, you know, if you really have something in your heart that you really want to do, stay the course. Because now and I got YouTube, I put on YouTube and I can jam with Herbie. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't get him yet, but I can <laughs> jam with him. <laughs> and I would have never thought. I would even be understanding what he was, what he's playing, what he's, um, you know, the kind of intellectual music he was putting out. But I hear it and I understand it now. So I just think, um, you know, you just have to be tenacious, follow your dream, be passionate and, and stick with that manager. You know, I should have went back and, and got my uncle to say, hey, I need you to help me again and help guide me through some roads. And I, I could have... Um, 
you know, avoided some pitfalls along the way. Now this might be this might be on along with what you just said, talking to your younger self. For the <laughs> new artists that are coming on board, new artists, new musicians, what advice would you give to them? Because it's very hard in the in the in the music industry right now. Yes, yes, it is. I, I think they need to learn the business. I think uh, you know they they uh, a lot of them. I mean, they're so awesome. I'm like, what are they feeding these kids? How is it that they're playing so effortlessly? They're playing so beautifully. They've got all this innate talent, but they don't know the business enough. And uh, I think that's really the thing. I'm I'm really encouraged by uh, so many of them. Um, really trying to invent new things and, and have new ideas about how we're going to get this music dispersed, how we're going to record new music. Um, you know, we have, a, we have trouble with that now because we, we can't be together. It's like how, you know, so we, you know, young people just, you need to be thinking about that. You need to usher the new in, you know, it was a time when there was uh, you know, vinyl and then the cassettes came along, then the, CDs and DVDs and, and all that digital audio. So now we're at the threshold. We have to cross over and we need young minds to, to take all of us, you know. And so uh, that's what I say. Learn the business and try to invent something. You know, you've got to start your own business. You, you won't, you know, waiting for somebody to call you and say, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you play in my band? Those days are over. You have to start your own business. And if you do, if you become a side man, that's wonderful. It has its place and you learn and stuff along the way, but you have to have your own business. So when they decide to go on vacation or they don't want to do it no more, or they get ready to have a baby and start a family and you just like, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> you know, you have your own business that you can still operate. So that's my advice. Now, who would be your dream collaboration? Because you've collaborated with quite a few people. Who would be your dream oh. collaboration to work with? Ooh, to, <laughs> to tour with. That's right. That's right. Yes. Oh, gosh. Well, you know what? I uh, I was just almost in tears uh, watching Tia Fuller on uh, Disney uh, Soul. Um, mm -hmm. That girl was playing. And I was like, <laughs> oh, I would love to play with her. And, uh, of course, uh, Gerald Albright is always one of my guys. Uh, Kim uh, Waters. Um, if I could have uh, Paul Jackson, of course, on guitar. I, you know, I used to play with him for years, too. And then, you know, if I make a mistake or if I do another change to go somewhere else, he'd be like, see, you wouldn't have done that if you played with Norman. He'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think I uh, really like all those guys. Um, uh, Cy Smith, I love her. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, even let us see, you know, and you know that little uh, young um, uh, Selena Albright. She is really coming up to be something really sweet, huh? And uh, Candace, I just love her too. There's so many people that I really love. I would love to play with all of them. And uh, of course, my girl Karen. Um, and uh, what's the new girl orchestra that plays the uh, violin? And uh, oh yes, um, yeah, or the art artist. What's her name? Yeah. Um, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Yeah, we've got a lot, a lot of different players that I haven't had a chance to play with. So, you know, I mean, you know, the list is just endless. Marcus Miller, I mean, if I could play with him, that would be great. Well, you, speak, <laughs> you know, you have to speak these things into existence, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. I just was like, you know, okay, you know, well, we'll see what happens. But you're right. You have to say oh, what it is that you want. What would be exactly. your dream? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Now, yeah. this this is one thing that that's dear to me is um, the arts in the schools. Like you said, you you played in the school system in Philadelphia. Yeah. I played, you know, same thing like you. I played the clarinet, flute, piccolo, all that in school. But as you know, in some of these schools, they're trying to take the arts out. You know, trying. Of, They've been. <laughs> they, <laughs> with that's the, how we got hip hop. That's yeah. why we got scratching because we didn't have no darn instruments. What do you think about that? And you know, what can what could possibly done to bring it back? You know? Yeah. I think we have to have the uh the ones uh that the the people that are really um really doing well in the business, I think they need to all come together and have their support system like people like me. And we need to say, hey, we got to help these kids. I mentor a lot of young people. And uh, so I get on the phone and I make calls, you know, 
Mm -hmm. Hey, Nathan, hey, Joe, right, you know, uh, so-and-so's coming up, you know, what can you do to help them, you know, get a, get a horn or instrument? So uh, that's what I think. I think we all need to come together and, and sit down and do business with these instrument companies. You know, we've been buying instruments. Girl, I've been buying keyboards for years. I have Fender Rhodes, this kind of Rhodes, you know, that's kind of keyboard, clavinets, modes. I spent thousands of dollars. And I think just like any company, those instrument companies need to give back. Mm -hmm. And um, they need to put the, you know, but we need, we need really uh, headliners to, to spear the campaign. And we need to have a conversation about that, that the uh, instrument companies need to give up the instruments so that we can uh, get them to the kids in the schools, you know. I want Jazz and Pink to be ambassadors of women in jazz. I want yes. us to get the instrument companies behind us, sponsor us to go over to Lagos, I don't care, or if we go down to Haiti, or if we go over to, to France and go into one of those girls' schools and sit down and have a cultural exchange with them and have the instruments and talk to them about the instrument, carry the instrument, playing, you know, jamming, all of that. I would love that. And so I've already put that on pen to paper. I've already. <laughs> oh, I've already... wow. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Well, mm -hmm. we're, I have one more question before they, they're giving my little time, my time down. Um, <laughs> one more <laughs> question. Where can people go to find your music or to find out more about you? Oh, uh, you know, I, uh, my website is being revamped and um, I can't wait. So my website, gailjohnson.com, the J-H-O-N. And you know what? That's been a conversation piece ever since Lena Ringstaff, my <laughs> graphic artist. She put that on my CD, my, my Keep the Music Playing. And my family called me up, girl, they done, oh, call me back. They done messed up your CD. They done spelled your name wrong. <laughs> So, uh, yes, yeah, Gail Johnson, J H O N S O N dot com or jazzandpink.com. And uh, of course, Amazon uh, Music, iTunes, it's, uh, it's all over the place. Uh, Spotify, we're streaming like big time. So, this yes. is uh, life is good. Yeah. Well, Gail, mm -hmm. I thank you so much for being here with us today. As always, every time I see you, we're laughing about something. <laughs> but. <laughs> Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. And I hope to see you soon. Yes. You know, on we the stage come. somewhere. Right. Yeah, and, uh, why can't we come to Hawaii? We can come to the university down there and we can kick it and, uh, you know, have ourselves a, you know, a, a workshop and all of that. Do a concert. Yeah, know? I'm going to talk to you offline, okay? But <laughs> Okay. Thank you, Gail, so much. And to yeah. my viewers, thank you so much for tuning in to the Hawaii Smooth Jazz Connection. Until next time, aloha and God bless.